Well, hi, this is Custom Works. I'm Clint Allen. And have you experienced excessive fuel consumption in your 7.3 power stroke? Lack of power? Transmission all of a sudden just starts shifting poorly? Have you failed an emissions test? Stick around! What <laughs> <laughs> the f*** are you doing? <laughs> well, thanks for hanging around through that, huh? Well, today we're talking about the Manifold Absolute Pressure Sensor, or MAP Sensor for short. And uh, where is this located? Well, on the screen is going to show the picture of a 94 through 98. And then the next picture is going to be the 99 through 03 location. So what are the codes that uh, we should be looking for? Well, first off, if the sensor goes bad, it might not throw a code at all. Just the way that the 7.3 computer works. But if you do get a code, the code could be a PO 105, 106, 107, or 108 which also might come back as a transmission fault or a barometric pressure sensor fault. Now, we'll be covering the barometric pressure sensor in a future video. Uh, this is completely different sensor, different location for both model years. And if you own a 99 through 03, well, this is going to be a separate wrench throwing event if one of these things go bad in your truck because of the location. And you'll see why when we get to that video. So the map sensor is generally used in place of a mass airflow sensor in gas automobiles. It preceded the mass airflow sensor and was less efficient the MAP sensor measures the pressure of the intake manifold through the, a vacuum. The more pressure, the lower the vacuum and the lower the voltage output signal. The lower the pressure, the higher the vacuum and the higher the voltage output signal will be. The MAP basically measures the airflow of the air through the manifold or some call it a Y pipe. Some people call it an X pipe either which way where the hose connects up to the top of the inlet on your 7.3 is what we're talking about here. So we're going to want to figure out how to test this. That's why you came here. First, let's do the obvious. Let's check the rubber tube. Now let's face it, these trucks have got some age and if you can basically at the sensor or at the manifold, take that rubber tube and actually turn it easily. You need to get that rubber tube off of there, just replace it. It's probably already got cracks in it, it's might have a hole in it already. The clamps could be worn, either which way, that rubber tube is spent because of the years. Do yourself a favor, it's cheap. Cheapest, one of the cheapest things you can do to better your fuel mileage and have, you know, not have runnability problems, just put a new tube on it, get her done. Don't forget to put the loom over the top of it. That way if it's brushing around on top of anything on the motor, it doesn't rub a hole through it. So after that, let's check the wires and the connectors. So are the wires connected properly to the plug? Have they been bent for some time? Are they making the connection? Are the wires cracked? These are the things that we need to follow up through the motor and also make sure at the connection that the connection is clean, that it hasn't got eroded over time or has debris on it or whatever the case may be. So testing and in the background here is going to show the pin connectors and map sensors are real basic and they're basically universal. Either they're a four wire lead or a three wire lead. In this case, we're looking at a three wire lead and 
they all are the same identical way for testing. So what we want to do, don't remove it from the truck, leave everything hooked up the way it is, and get your 12 volt tester out. And let's go ahead and take that black lead of your 12 volt tester, let's put it in DC 12 volt mode, connect the black lead to your battery, and then let's take the testing part, the red part of the lead, and on the number one pin, let's hook up to that with the key on and not running, and we should be getting voltage of 4.5 to 5 volts. Then what we want to do is on the number two lead with the engine running just at an idle, we want to hook up to that second lead and we should be getting a 0.5 to 1.5 voltage. And if you have hopefully a, another human to give you a, you know, a hand, slowly increase the RPMs up to 1200 RPMs. And if you have no voltage fluctuations or they're crazy and they're all over the place, basically your sensor is toast. You found the problem. Now the exact numbers, when you're raising the RPMs, we basically can't give you those numbers because it depends where you are located at, at whatever sea level, because that changes that voltage rating. But basically, if you have whacked out or no voltage fluctuations, the sensor's bad, needs to be replaced. So the 94, 98, and the 99 and 03 are different sensors. They're on the screen. And these need to be quality. Don't be running out to eBay or Amazon or getting some junk. Let's go ahead, spend the money once. Let's get a good Ford OEM quality map sensor. Let's get it installed because the other ones are going to be cheaper. Yeah, you're going to save a few bucks and then a couple years on down the line, you're going to be replacing it again or sitting on the side of the road and we all know how fun that is. So I hope you've learned something today and you take it easy and you have a good day. You're still here yet? It's over. Oh, I know. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell, and that'll tell you when my next video comes up. Until then, go home.